Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. What's, What's up, up everyone? everyone? Hello. Hello. Should I just go right into it? If you why? wanna. Yeah, that's why I don't think I could smell. Okay. And why you might hear me being a little... Yeah. A little Fran Dreschery. Yeah. I don't know if you heard this because I did talk about it when I was on my live, on the book live I did. I wasn't allowed to you listen were, you to you. You couldn't hear. So that's why I was like, I don't know if she actually knows the story or not. So I'm no, going to tell you. Um, well, I know Sawyer headbutted you. Not headbutted. Close. But Chucked I, a milky. Yes. <laughs> get this. I think that it's broken again. Nuh-uh. Look at it. I put heavy makeup on, but oh. can you see how wa- like the swollen now that you pointed and then out look at where the bruising is? I woke up the next day oh, with yeah. deep black circles under my well, eyes. Well, was it ever like fully healed? healed properly? No. And Corey told me once you break your nose, it's very easy to break it again. And it was in the exact spot. So here, here's the thing. If you weren't I there. I now you see didn't... the bruising. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you didn't. Right, let me just tell you one thing, everybody. I've been fucking going through it this week. Yeah. So. I started off when we got back because this is just how it is every time we travel. I swear to God, I get sick. It's like the planes. And it also probably is. It's spring in Ohio. We're just filtering fart air around. Dude, and bad. I know and it's we fart air. Because so- you were <laughs> farting. Because <laughs> I was farting the whole time. I heard you, bitch. <laughs> I had my headphones in and I was like. Rip it out. If I can't hear them, you can't. <laughs> it was bad. And I could. And I also had headphones in. <laughs> but. So I started to get sick. And so the one day I was just laying on the couch, kind of like sloth mode. Right. Mm-hmm. And Sawyer was just being a, a crazy two year old. Mm-hmm. So she's running back and forth on our couch, which is very bouncy and also really deep and like wide. You know what I mean? So it's a big, wide, deep couch. It's like a twin size bed. Yes. It's crazy. I love it. It's like a big cloud. Um, so there's a lot of room for her to run and jump. Mm-hmm. And I'm still fully on the other side, but she decides she wants some milk. And so she's got like a little bit left in the like. It's like a bottle sippy cup, but the ho- mm-hmm. the top is all hard, right? Mm-hmm. So she goes, a milk, a milk, a milk. <laughs> like, I want a new one. And I was like, all right, bring it here. And she's running back and forth. Okay, she's got momentum. Uh huh. So I lean forward. At the time I lean forward, she's like bouncing towards me. And she just propels forward, milk in hand. I move closer at the same time that the milk in her hand connects with my nose and just like, boom. Instant pain. Instantly, I went, oh, that that broke. That's broken. I heard a oh, no. crack in my face. And I was like, oh. well, I'm sick. Well, now I'm sick. There's one thing I can't do. It's crack in my face. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> so, so. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to listen to your story, and I care an awful lot, but I'm so distracted by your nails. Oh! They look so nice. Oh, thank nice new you. shape. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I really like this shape. They look a great. Lot better. I know yeah. you were nervous about it that you didn't think they would look good. No, I really when, love it. Remember when you had to choose between having my fingers and my belly button and you're like, "Well, I'm definitely not picking your belly button." <laughs> so, I decided to get your fingers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Thanks. I really like the shape. It's a lot easier to uh it feels better, too. It to looks manage. nice. Thank it looks you. really nice. Thank you. You're cute. Thanks. Um, so and then they match your nose because they're also black. <laughs> yes, they are, dude. Oh my god. So so that happens. I'm recovering from that. Um, and then yesterday I go out. Here's the other thing that happens when we travel. I don't shit. And the reason why <laughs> is because while we are traveling, I usually have like nervous diarrhea for shows and and whatnot. For fun. You know how it goes. So I'll take like anti-diarrhea medicine and then that just blocks me up stupid so you take a lot i have to or i'm going to shit on stage and it's scary i have to take like anyways like two yeah one before like we're getting ready and then one right before we go out for it to last through meet and greets and Uh stuff anyways so (laughs) we get home I shit one time this week in the last week we've been home. That's it. And it wasn't a lot. So I knew it was coming. Oh, no. 2.30 in the morning rolls around last night. And I wake up. 2.30 in the morning. Not a soul in sight. (laughs) I wake up because I think a bomb went off in my lower intestine. (laughs) Okay. The pain I felt. Trigger warning. But I thought potentially that I could be like. 
miscarrying again. That's how oh. bad that pain was. I was going to say, did you feel like they f- your appendix reappeared and it is now exploding? <laughs> I, I don't know because I've never, I don't have an appendix. Apparently, yeah. So I don't know what it feels really? like to rupture. But I do know that that's what that pain felt like to me. And I was Oof. like, I don't know what's happening, but this is so bad. So I go to sit on the toilet and I'm just like hunched over. And for two hours, nothing happens. And here's the thing. Sometimes you just have to sit with your ass open. And I did. And I You just have to get on a toilet and sit with your butt cheeks apart and your asshole agape. I was crying. I was sitting there crying and I was praying. (laughs) I was like, whoever's out there. I don't know. But please, I am in agony. So then around the two hour mark. Are you about to tell me that you are recommitting your life to Christ? I'm thinking about it. (laughs) Last night, maybe a believer. No, I'm just kidding. But what happened was around the two hour mark, I start thinking, oh, I wonder if I have like a bowel obstruction or something. Like, what if there's a shit particle so hard yeah. that it's obstructing? Uh huh. Because I feel like this pain is not normal uh-huh. constipation pain either. It's like just, it's Did something. Did you have to go fishing? No, I didn't. Okay, good. No, I did not. But what happened was I took <laughs> tool softener and, yes. and laxatives. Okay. Yeah. And? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a combo one. Oh, okay. It's like okay, the okay, Kool-Aid okay. stool softener laxative. Dope, okay. Whatever. I thought you said Kool-Aid. <laughs> you, know, like, you know how it oh, goes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they just bust through your colon <laughs> like the wall <laughs> so, in the commercials. I took that at the beginning part because I knew it was probably you yeah. got to ship, but it's not happening. So two hours rolls around and it says it'll start to work in 12 to 36. And I was like, this is not going to work. Hours? Me. Yes. The stool softener part. I don't think it's the laxative part, but. Either way, what happened next is unexplainable. <laughs> but I'm a, it, but you're going to explain it. Well, then I finally gave birth. Okay. <laughs> and it was Out horrific. I did say thank you the entire time. I was like, thank you. Whoever's there. <laughs> thank you. And Whoever then, answered this prayer. For 30 minutes, I just had basically water mm. coming out afterwards mm-hmm. and i was like as a horrible, shell of a human just letting it happen as horrible as that feeling is it's such a relief because you know nothing's obstructing shit now i wanted to well that's why i was like i could cry i'm so relieved to mm. me i don't care if i'm on this toilet for the next five days <laughs> but i do want you to know that i'm very aware that i could shit myself on this couch because since last night Even it's now? been happening without warning just like good it's happening. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and you know what's scary? Sorry if you don't like shit talk. Um, I should tell you right you up front. <laughs> Are you new? Right up front. This is probably not the podcast for you, number one. And number two, you're really not going to like this episode. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. But I thought, okay, I'll just take some Imodia, but I don't want to start the cycle yeah, over. You really so I'm can. just not taking it. So I'm just letting it happen. Yeah. I'm trying to drink water, I'm eating fiber. Okay, that's I'm trying good. to do all the good stuff. That's good. But I am scared. Well, so that's what everybody should know. If I shit myself, I'm, you're, I, I just, I think I'm among friends. You are. You you're in good company here. <laughs> it's, it'll we're be all okay. wishing you the best. Thanks. We're thoughts and prayersing the shit out of you right As now. As you should. Quite I was, literally. I was thoughts and praying myself last time. <laughs> so I want to talk about Texas, but before Texas, mm-hmm. I need you to know that I woke up at four in the morning last night. Oh my God, while well, I was on the toilet. 4.06 a.m. That's so crazy. That's and literally I a, when I was crying. I woke up. <laughs> that actually makes this so, fun, so much funnier. <laughs> I woke up this morning, like when I actually woke up, uh-huh. to a note that I had written at 4.06 a.m. that says, tell Sierra. Oh my God. Because okay. she's dying. <laughs> apparently, I, apparently, apparently, I had a dream and... I thought that these two things that I wrote down were important to tell you. Oh, God. Okay, ready? (laughs) Number one. Bitch, where'd you get a potato? (laughs) (laughs) Number number two. No no context. (laughs) That's it. Number two. Yeah, number two is right. That's what I know. (laughs) You got to stop wearing that shit, Kevin. Hang it up. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know why... I thought it was important to tell you. It was like one of those things that you probably knew exactly what it was in the dream. And then when you fell back asleep, you lost all parts of it except for (laughs) the words. And you're like, what does this mean? So now I woke up and I'm like, bitch, where'd you get a potato? And I'll tell you, I remember what was happening in the dream. Okay. 
I don't know why I thought it was so funny that I was like, you got to tell us the year of that. <laughs> this is really good. So in the dream, I was on an airplane. Okay. With a group of Farting people. Farting everywhere. <laughs> with a group of people for like a school event. Oh. Okay. Okay. And I look over and I say, bitch, where'd you get a potato? And this person had, <laughs> had a baked potato with bacon and cheese on it and Yum. i was like yo i've only ever been given crackers where'd you get a fucking baked potato <laughs> yeah, i don't want that and i just thought the sentence bitch where'd you get a potato What's funny? it's something i'd like to put into my vocabulary <laughs> on the regular next one you gotta stop wearing that shit kevin hang it up yeah i feel like saying hang it up is a is another way to that's, just be like that's enough wrap her up yep it's you gotta stop it hang, hang it, it up. up my ass Hang it up. Hang it up. All right, you're done shitting. Hang it up. Hang it up. I'm not exactly sure who Kevin was or what he was wearing that I was telling him not to wear anymore to retire whatever he was wearing. But I do remember mm. that I was supposed to be on my way to Portland. Yes. But I forgot my backpack in a pod. Oh. So at this airport, there were pods mm -hmm. that were like, Big triangular domes okay. that you sat in, and instead of like walking to your gate, yeah, you just punched in which gate you needed to go through. It's like the Willy Wonka Go Anywhere elevator. Oh yeah, okay. And so it took me, but I forgot my backpack in it. So I'm trying to call the person who was working the pod and be like, "Can you bring me my backpack back?" And while I was waiting, I was with my class, yes, on these bleachers and Nitro Circus, um adjacent car drivers came right. over and they were going to do a performance and sure. they start looking in the audience and they're like we need someone to drive the wiener car <laughs> <laughs> and they point to someone two rows behind me you know exactly who they pointed to kevin and oh you <laughs> okay as soon as i say the next next sentence you're gonna know exactly who they pointed <laughs> to they say it's going to be you and everyone turns and starts going wiener wiener <laughs> wiener he's a wiener <laughs> <laughs> so not Kevin. <laughs> not Kevin. Okay. <laughs> and this person got so mad <laughs> that, 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 that everyone was calling him a wiener and that they had to drive the wiener car. <laughs> but he had to. No, yeah. What's your chosen to be the wiener? <laughs> Mobile, you're chosen to be the wiener. Mobile. That's I don't make saying. the fucking rules. And so while we're while we're waiting and we're watching um these people drive these cars and people are still yelling wiener at this person <laughs> it's thunderstorming yes and you go oh that doesn't look good and the worker's like yeah it's not when it's like this it's kind of rough and every once in a while you see a plane crash <laughs> oh my god that's exactly what you did you're like well i don't want to go out here anymore. like this <laughs> I never did make it to Portland. Oh my god! Nah, it kind of ended there. Well, luckily for you, we are <laughs> going to Portland soon, and I have a feeling we'll be just fine. I think it's gonna be. But if I don't get a potato on that flight, I'm gonna no. be furious. I'm gonna be like, excuse me, my subconscious told me there'd be potatoes. <laughs> if they did. I don't know how you can make that happen, but I'd like it to. If someone's named Kevin on that, flight, oh no, I'll freak out. Like flight what attendant if, Kevin. If, yes. Kevin with the big potatoes. <laughs> Hang it up, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, my potato. Part of me wants to look up potatoes. I think you have to. I'm going to. Well, I'll look up airplanes. Okay. I and wiener. Oh, not me. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> look at one. Constipation followed by explosive <laughs> diarrhea is what was in my Google search. <laughs> okay, relax. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I was good. Now, did they tell me that that could happen after like a blockage is released? Yes, something about something. I don't know. I was really fucking tired whenever I was reading about it. But potato okay. dreams. Dream of an airplane elicits uh, positive emotions and encourages the dreamer to embrace opportunities and take risks in order to reach greater heights in life. Okay. A des dreaming of flying often represents a desire for freedom, sense of overcoming obstacles, or a need to escape from something in your waking life. Wow. I've actually... Um, because I, was, I did fly. That's where the potato thing happened. Yes. I actually think that I knew that because I have flying dreams all the time. I have dreams that we're taking off, and then all of a sudden the captain's like, Sierra, you need to fly the plane. And I'm like, <laughs> what? 
And they're like, you've, you're fine. You've flown before. And I'm like, I, I promise you I haven't. <laughs> I certainly haven't. I'll tell you right now that I'm not, I've, I've never flown. And But it's like, it's also like Fred Flintstoning where we're all just like kicking with our feet <laughs> yep. to get the plane up. It's very <laughs> yep. amusing. I don't know if this is going to be anything because I can't find my dream thing that I usually use. Oh, wait, no. Let me find my dream interpre- interpreter. Big potato dream meaning. Hang on. I want to find the site that I like because okay. I have a site and I freaking everything is that this is it. Dream moods. Is it dream Christ? <laughs> oh, I almost went to dream Christ. <laughs> I swear to God, I almost did, but that's not oh. it. It's dream mood. I'm praying to you, dream Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell Wiener. Me, tell me about my ass. Is it okay? I'm really scared. <laughs> We're in P's. P O. P A T O. Po. No. <laughs> Potato. Nope. I'm on the wrong P O. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to find it. Where the fuck is the T? Here's what I am realizing is I don't know where letters go in the alphabet. <laughs> and that's it's toward the end. It's got to be. It's definitely mm. pornography. That's not what I'm looking up. You're sick. It's after that for sure. Oh, I feel like I could shit again. I'm scared. To see potatoes in your dreams represent your earthiness and simplicity. Alternately, the dream may be a metaphor that you're being a couch potato. In other words, you're being lazy. (laughs) I don't like that one. Seeing a potato in your dream may be a metaphor that some issue is like a hot potato. A situation is being passed around instead of properly dealt with. Nobody wants to handle the issue. To see or eat mashed potatoes in your dreams suggests that you are experiencing concerns over financial matters. Well, interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All interesting. Of that, very interesting. Weird. Yeah. That's why I like that fucking dream mood. Weird. One. It always hits in I a normally, way that I'm like, I normally oh. look at dream moods too. Yeah. Because there's a Z, right? A to Z. Yep. Well, moods is with a Z, isn't it? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't just look at it that Bitch, way. where'd you get a potato? <laughs> it's my financial distress. <laughs> oh, this is my financial portfolio potato. <laughs> this is my financial potato po- potato Leo. Potato Leo. <laughs> so here's the deal, everybody. I let Patreon decide what the fuck they wanted from us this week because that's a perk of being on. Yeah, and if you don't Patreon, like what they picked, join Patreon and outvote them. And you get <laughs> and you get to decide. That's. That would be your perk. And also, we're going to do more of these on there. So just go anyway. It's going to be a good time. But basically, they decided they wanted a smirgasbird again. Mm. They were like, we love a good mashup. Just give us a little bit of everything. And so that's what I did. That's what I did. I was going to try to make it have a theme. But there were so many good ones that were not themed that I was like, fuck it. I'm just just going for it. So here we go. Wait a minute. It's a little bit of everything. Should we tell them about Texas? Oh, hell yeah. I didn't know if we were saving that for Patreon or not. I don't know. Texas was wild. Texas was the most... Texas? Texas? What the fuck? (laughs) Truly. But in the best way. Yeah. In the best way. I've never been so scared, intimidated, and also like just elated to be around people in my life. I came back with a don't mess with Texas sweatshirt. I almost wore it today. Me too, but I'm so fucking hot. Me too. Uh, But... I no longer believe don't mess with Texas is like a, a fear mongering thing. Like you're going to kill me. I think that you're all very vulnerable and yeah, sad. That's true. And it's like, don't mess with me because I am on the brink of tears. <laughs> <laughs> because ble- honestly, I need less messing with me. I'm having a very hard time. And I think that that's what it means. We also, I, I really wanted to see an armadillo and we did see one. It was dead on the side of the highway and mm-hmm. that was upsetting. But it did inspire our country line uh, of ladies and pleasure uh, the first product being the armadildo (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. armadildo Mm -hmm. it's not gonna be dead but it also won't be alive so (laughs) you will need batteries (laughs) do it that way you will anything else what i was like do i apologize to that guy (laughs) oh yeah maybe maybe you should (laughs) Let me tell you something. You Here's guys deal. You guys know how we said don't yell stuff out during shows. Not only is it because it's distracting. We do talk to you guys. Like we do yeah. want the back and forth. We actually had to tell Austin like, "No, you can talk back when we talk to you" because they were really following the rules. <laughs> so were, was Houston. Yeah, they were. Dallas was another beast. Now, Dallas, you were fucking wild and awesome. 
In theaters, it's so much harder to hear. Because in comedy clubs, we're right next to the people who yes. are up front. So we can hear pretty clearly. However, it's still it's still loud. Yeah. Um, and things are being said and we have, you know, the sound that we play in our ears as yes. well. So like what Plus we're our saying own mics are in our is ears. Is reflecting back to us as well on the stage. So it's very, very loud and it's hard to understand what you're saying. And sometimes when you yell stuff. I hear something different than what you yelled. <laughs> and in Dallas, that's what happened. That's what happened. And so I I went real hot at this man. And to be fair, you did it in a very fun way. I, think so. I didn't know that it was anything serious. I thought yeah. you were just like picking on him like like comedians do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you weren't like mean. And from his body language, you, you can seem, tell me. Yeah. I feel like you were also in. <laughs> yeah, like it was okay. At, by the end, you were standing up clapping, giving me a thumbs up, and I was blowing you kisses. I felt like it was we were on the same page. <laughs> but I do feel badly because I found out what you said, and that is not what I heard. And what I heard was significantly worse than what you said. Meaner. So just beware. If you or anyone you're bringing are going to yell stuff out at this stage, this you might very- catch some smoke from me on accident because... Because I couldn't hear you correctly. There's a very good chance that we just will, um, our brains will change that around for us as well, based on how we feel about ourselves internally. <laughs> yes. And be like, they just said something horrible to you. Well, it's also like, if I don't address this, are people going to continue yelling? And yeah. at that moment, what am I going to be like? Did you just call me a bitch? Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and also, I hope you had a good time. Yeah. I I'll take accountability. Hey, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll hold my hands up. I'll take accountability for that. I was I was wrong and I turned an entire audience on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that you were gonna test out the armadildo and maybe that was too far. <laughs> or maybe you liked it. I don't know. If you did, what's up? Okay. <laughs> hey. To each their own. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm for it. It's honestly not the worst thing we've said at a show. That's so. truly not the worst thing we've said at a show. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And we don't have to talk about that. And we won't. Austin, you don't tell Austin. anybody. <laughs> don't tell anybody what I said at that show. I have nightmares about that. And honestly, Houston got some, got some as well. Let me just say, we went off the fucking rails <laughs> in Texas. We felt Texas energy, I feel, and then we gave it back to you. And, it, and Texas changed us. <laughs> Texas changed us massacre is what happened. <laughs> It was everything was bigger in Texas. The jokes were bigger. The the (laughs) I'm not going to say what I want to say. The trauma dumping was bigger in Texas. That's for certain. That's for sure. That's for certain. So, but hey, it was one of some of the best audiences I think that we've encountered. Lovely staff as well. Amazing people all around. Truly, Mm -hmm. and Dallas. I told somebody because they were like, how was the show? How were the shows? And I said, at one point in Dallas, I thought we're not going to be able to speak at all. Cause it was five minutes when we went out there before cheering died down. I was like, we haven't done anything. We just walked Have out here. Have you ever been somewhere where it's so loud that your ears start ringing? It just stops <laughs> registering sound. That's what Dallas was like. It was so fucking cool. It was the crazy. Energy, the energy at all three shows were so different, but also fucking cool. Like, Dallas was one that almost vibes. got me to cry as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I've said before, like when I'm here, when I'm on stage, when, when, when we here, are doing our family. <laughs> <laughs> this is Olive Garden. <laughs> when I'm doing my job, I kind of shut off like the emotional part of my sure. life. But like Dallas got really fucking close to pulling me out of it. They did. And it it's was so cool. It's crazy to realize that like this is our job, but we made our job having connections with people. Yeah. And so to see we that connection that. live we felt that back was crazy. It absolutely incredible. So Seattle, Portland, Chicago, uh, Michigan, Minneapolis, if you want to try to top it <laughs> yeah we're not gonna oh be mad. also we only have two shows that aren't sold out yeah left. for our next five that is why chicago and seattle so if you are anywhere near one of those two places even if you like wanted to go to the portland show and couldn't i know it's a drive we have to make it yeah we do but it, you could go to the seattle one it's that's a, it's a big old theater so yeah, like got, there's definitely more seats because it's a that's a huge theater yeah and so is chicago so like uh, if you've been on the fence about coming, eh. 
Hop off that fence and come. <laughs> That's what we want. That's what I've always said. Hell yeah. All right. So we have some stories today. Mm-hmm. That was our little, did we just play an ad? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Well, Probably. I did see somewhere on Reddit where someone was like, I get irrationally angry at their ad intro. Well, me too, honestly. Yeah, it's fair enough, I guess. <laughs> but I like to give you a heads up on, <laughs> so on what to do then. Fucking sorry about yeah. that. I'm sorry we're bothering you, dude. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm go. on Reddit, by the way. Yeah, we can see everything. We can see everything on Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This one's called Sweet, Sweet Pissy Revenge. <laughs> Feels like a good one to start. I can't remember because I did these at the beginning of the week before I was mm-hmm. concussed and um, not well. Yeah. Because uh, I just overcame a cold as well. Yeah. So I don't remember these 100%. So we'll see. Okay. Sweet, sweet, pissy revenge. This is a that's disgusting slash horror story. Oh, okay. here we go. Hello, ladies. My name is Taylor. She, her, and you can use my name. I struggle with my memory. I feel you, Jerry. Oh, me too. (laughs) I'm not Jerry, but I do too. I was looking at pictures, like baby pictures with Alex today, and they were like, oh, what's what vacation was this? And I was like, couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Honestly, no idea. Was I almost 10 years old? Yeah. (laughs) No idea where I am. Yep. So I don't really know how long I've been listening, but it's been a good bit. I actually met y'all at the Charlotte live show. I was the last person in line who expressed her concerns about what is wrong with me if y'all don't actually exist. So you better exist because I'm not putting up with this crud if it's all in my head. I swear to God. Fair enough. I swear to God. Anyways, I have a that's disgusting slash kind of horror story for you. So buckle up because I'm a rambling girl and can't tell a short story to save my life. Just ask any of my friends who get voice memos and Snapchat videos from me. So let me set the scene. It's the summer of 2021, and I'm with my very first serious (laughs) boyfriend. What? Sorry, I just remembered the... the the voice memo we accidentally sent in the elevator when we were in Texas, in what? Houston. We sent a voice memo? We sure did. I'm going to try and find it. Okay. Oh, God, there was my ass on a window. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, there it is. Ready? Sierra and I are in an elevator and accidentally took this voice note. <laughs> Texas did to me. I think it was. I think I remember saying that. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell. It kind of sounded like me when I said straight, like that part. Straight to hell. Oh hell. Anyway, Texas, <laughs> you were crazy. Okay, so here we go. Summer of 2021 with the very first serious boyfriend who was actually very toxic something all my friends saw and I did not go me it's a canon event Mm. (laughs) this summer my ex let's call him B short for little bitch boy (laughs) (laughs) I like that wiener wiener Wiener. (laughs) decided he wanted to live at the beach for the summer now if you know anything about go find yourself brother who gives a fuck I fucking guess now if you know anything about renting it is very hard to find an apartment complex that will let you rent an apartment for only three months cue the yucky has probably not been cleaned in months cockroach filled apartment that B and his roommate roommate stayed in when I say it was disgusting I mean I cleaned those floors at least three times and still didn't feel comfortable walking around without something on my feet Mm. not to mention the fact that there were so many cockroaches living rent free like you would wake up to them crawling on the walls and just see them scurrying around all the time oh shit where the hell were we Co- i don't know cockroaches speaking of co- the, how weird is that that we were, we're talking t- about cockroaches and you just looked down and saw a tick uh uh-huh. mose moser click clack yeah click clack was running up at the land and he had a freaking tick on him and i had to kill it with poopery <laughs> <Poopery. laughs> yeah out of here Forget all right psych. Cockroaches living rent free, like you would wake up to them crawling on the walls and just see them scurrying around all the time. Mm-mm. Hashtag no thank you. Mm-hmm. So there we were, sitting on the blow up air mattress that we slept on, mm-hmm. on the ground, yes, where mm-hmm. the cockroaches could get us, playing a game. I was wine drunk, like drank a whole bottle by myself and in a silly, goofy mood. Well, B decides it's time for sexy fun. Quote, he's the only one who ever gets off tango time. <laughs> 
So we start tangoing, and me being in a silly, goofy mood, I start giggling for probably no reason at all. That's <laughs> my favorite thing when you're doing it, is just to be like, <laughs> and me imagine this is menacing. Now, I don't know if you know this, but when one drinks a whole bottle of wine by themselves, it really fills up their bladder. And luckily, I'm the kind of person that you would think has had kids before with how much I pee myself during daily activities. You can probably tell where this is going, but I start to giggle and my bladder says, all right, she's laughing. It's time to open the floodgates. (laughs) And I pee all over this man as he is actively inside my temple, if you catch my drift. (laughs) Oh, golden shower. This was like a quote, I've been holding my pee all day and couldn't stop my stream even if I want to kind of pee. Oh, no. Like once it started, it was not stopping until the well had run dry and the well was not shallow. (laughs) Obviously, I thought this was hilarious. (laughs) But B did not. I laughed my head off afterwards and he got upset. Made me Imagine clean everything up. Imagine laughing and it just like comes out <laughs> faster. Out. And you're on an air mattress, so it's just bouncing off. <laughs> it's just like a trampoline. Oh my. Um, and he got upset and made me clean everything up, which valid. It was my pee pee. <laughs> I also just want to reemphasize that all of this happened on a blow up air mattress on the ground of a roach infested apartment. <laughs> Talk about a romance. <laughs> That is romance. And honestly, my pee probably wasn't the worst thing that had sullied that apartment. I mean, B was there. So I love to tell this story now and laugh about it. Honestly, I think my body was getting preemptive revenge on this boy for the trauma he put me through that that all ended in him cheating on me and lying about it until I found out. And he, quote, was going to tell me. Sure. Mm -hmm. He may have mentally messed up, but I never got peed on. So who's really the winner here? (laughs) Mentally messed me up. Is that what I meant to say? I don't know. I was so focused on getting peed on. (laughs) I know. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to read this story from little old me. I know it's not the most thrilling, but as a girl who has only had sex with one guy who turned out to be a dick, I think it's pretty funny. That you peed on him? Hell yeah, it is. (laughs) I agree, girl. I agree. Mark your your fucking territory. Exactly. If you're going to fucking do it, (laughs) you're going to... He's never going to forget you. You cheated on... Or he cheated on you, sure. But also... He was covered in your piss. Yeah. <laughs> that girl knew that. Yeah. You, you had your stench all over him. <laughs> or whatever dogs do. Then she had to pee on him as well. He's going to be <laughs> peed on for the rest of his life. <laughs> That's so good. I also wanted to say thank you for being you and sharing your experiences. You have helped me discover so much about myself in so many ways. Oh, I didn't read this part before. I lost my mom when I was in high school, so I never got the chance to learn certain things from her, like about being a mom. So getting to hear all of your life lessons and female identifying human experiences makes it easier to navigate life without the help from my mom. I also, I know, I also feel so much better about staying in my toxic relationship for as long as I did because of the way you guys have reassured us and made sure we knew it was not our fault for these things that happened to us. Thank you again. I hope all of your wishes and dreams come true and that every visit to Sheets is the most delicious one yet. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Taylor. Thank you. That's amazing. That what makes me pissy I'm, revenge. I'll tell you what, I'm in my feels today. Dude, I feel it. I like, feel the feels. Wh- and I, I'm at a place where like I can't open the well because if it opens, it's very much like the pee. That guy. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to stop the stream <laughs> out of my it's eyes. Be crazy. And like, yeah, I was. Oh, so I shouldn't read this heartwarming one next. No, you can. You, this one made me cry when I read it. Great. So great. Challenge accepted. Here we go. I'm drinking one of my curious elixirs. I'm drinking one of my good time drinkies. So maybe I'm just. It won't. Hit. Maybe I'll be in a silly, goofy mood. We'll see. Definitely. Because when I drink wine, mm. when I'm wine and I'm crying. And, yeah. You know, what I'm <laughs> you know how they say. <laughs> you know what they always say. And you're wine and you're crying. Oh, crying and okay. <laughs> crying and I'm not going to tell you I don't want to give this away so I'm not going to read you the title great but here we go hello ladies my name is Hannah and I'm 23 years old my pronouns are she her Jerry this is going to start sad so buckle up <laughs> I also have permission to share this with the world so this story starts at the end of 2012 my sweet sweet father Chris has been fighting pancreatic cancer for almost 20 months at this point I'm so sorry the pancreatic i know you picked pancreatic <laughs> well i don't think they picked it no I know no you're talking you to me. did I know. um it gets good hold on it mm-hmm. is heartwarming for a reason mm-hmm. 
Hell of a tough man. Yet we all knew what was coming as the worst had begun to happen. That shit sucks. Anyways, my father had called all of our family together to get one last holiday together, and we all knew that. But the moment his younger brother Michael and his wife Alice walked in the door, my father's whole reason for calling all of us changed. My father asked to speak to his brother about something important, and all of us kids went, ah, shit, dad's going to make us fucking cry on Christmas. (laughs) Of course, my uncle said, sure, and my dad dead face looked at him and said, You know how Alice was told she could never have children, his wife. My uncle, clearly put off by that statement, was like, no shit, Chris. (laughs) But he said, of course I know that. My father took my uncle and his little brother by the hand and said, you will have a little girl soon. Now, my uncle just thought that that was my dad's last attempt to make him feel better. And so no one took him very seriously. Now we skip ahead to April of 2013. My father passed on January 4th, 2013. My mother, who was still very much having a hard time with the death of my father, gets a phone call from my uncle, who is in tears. My uncle tells my mom, Chris sent us a baby, Joe. I know! (laughs) Insert me and my mother sobbing like big babies. Turns out that my aunt, who was told she would never be able to have biological children of her own, found out she was pregnant in her mid-40s. My aunt and uncle were both so excited for their new bundle of joy to be born, and they always say that their baby was sent to them by my father. Now it's 2024, and that baby is a baby girl, and we will call her A, because she's still a minor child, and she looks just like my father. She has his height and his eyes and totally has his nose. She is the family miracle, and we all believe that my father sent her to my uncle and aunt (laughs) and the family to give us someone to love and cherish just As we did him when we lost him. I'm so sorry for the long story, but this heartwarming story is my whole heart. Hope you ladies enjoy this. I am so sorry to Jerry for possibly making you ugly cry, but you aren't alone. I still ugly cry about this to this day. Much love, Hannah. Oh, my God. (laughs) I know. And I tell you, I was sobbing on my couch. The fact that you put that story after a piss story. I'm sorry. (laughs) What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, why were we getting in our feels about the pistol? Oh, because of the end. Because of the end. See, it all connects. <laughs> it all connects. Well, you didn't even read the end. I know. Oh, no. Fuck. To be fair, I didn't put these in any order. <laughs> Good. I just fly by the seat of my pants. Oh, right I'm now. just pissing by the seat of my pants. And that's what I know. Oh, what a beautiful story. I know it. I know it. Oh my goodness. I just really love I really love that one. Well, and like it's really emotional because it's really close to a story that happened to a friend of ours whose dad had pancreatic cancer um and she was pregnant. Yeah. Lost her daughter. Yes. Lost her dad within days of each other mm-hmm. and then just gave birth to a baby girl. Oh. And whenever I oh, fuck Whenever I think about that, and I, th- I know she's like, I just wanted my dad to be able to meet her. And I was like, imagine, like, the first man she who did. got to hold you is the first man who gets to hold her just <gasps> in heaven. Oh, my God. That one. No oh, thinking about a yogi. <laughs> you can't. No, absolutely not. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Do you want right. to go get in my car and cry at the park again? I do. Kind of, <laughs> yes. All right, we gotta switch. We gotta switch it up. Here's a here's an update. I have an, an update. update. For you. An update to Peggy got pegged in the porter body. <laughs> oh, girl, you got. Hold on, you gotta go fix your eyes. No, you, it's, who gives a fuck? Keep your talking. eyes look like mine. <laughs> what My does nose. That mean? My nose when I woke up. I look stunning. <laughs> It's okay. giving Jojo Siwa. <laughs> Have you seen? It's giving kiss. <laughs> oh okay, God. sorry. All it says was, hi, I'm so sorry. My grandma can't find the photos to prove I'm not lying, but here's text evidence. I can't believe you shared this story. Peggy died laughing. Apparently, she's still Oh, my God. I thought you were just going to say Peggy died. (laughs) Update. Peggy's dead. (laughs) Peggy died laughing. Oh, my God. Is that the title? (laughs) Update. Peggy's dead. Peggy got pegged in a porta potty. Is now Peggy's dead. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, she's still kind of cool. Also, she's a killer grandma. Porter... Porter potty pegged Peggy went on to become an educator and the first female principal in Ohio. In Ohio? In Ohio. Way to go, Peggy. Hell Rest yeah, in peace. Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in porter potties, you know? <laughs> Rest in power. Rest in pegging. 
Rest Pegly Peggy. <laughs> That's what I've always said. <laughs> Peter Piper pegged a Peggy pickle. <laughs> okay, okay, you get to pick. Because now I don't trust myself. And you shouldn't. Any sort of good <laughs> order. You shouldn't. We have a sleepwalking story. Ah. We have a poop story. We have a scary horror ghost story. Slash good time stuff, I guess. Not really. Heartwarming, ghost, <laughs> not really. We'll see. Or not that one. How about that? A scandal. <laughs> Uh, give me a scandal. This is titled, That Time in Second Grade I Started a Cult. <laughs> scandal? Question mark? Feel scandalous. Here we go. Hi, ladies. More impressive. I know. This is such a fucking good... If you know any elementary schoolers or you were one yourself one time... <laughs> you mm-hmm. fucking totally understand this. And this shit sounds like some shit you specifically, but you and I would have done together yeah. in, el- in elementary school. Yeah. So here we go. Hi, ladies. My name is Rachel She, Her, and I was an eight-year-old ghost whisperer and cult leader. When I was in second grade, I went to an after-school daycare slash purgatory place. Mm -hmm. That place had an insanely high turnover rate when it came to people watching the after-school kids, so a lot of times we'd have to go sit in the preschool room. As you can imagine, us elementary schoolers were not happy about this and also ridiculously bored. I had brief... I had briefs on. <laughs> I had box of briefs. That's what I'm wearing right now. It's so Me crazy. too. I what color? White. Black. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Real yin and yang. <laughs> I like I, it. I really fucking tested myself with these white ones. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, I had befriended this sixth grade girl named Alicia. Honestly, looking back, I don't know if befriended is the right word. I think I just followed her around Mm 24-7. Anyways, one day in the preschool room, we were messing with the board with magnetic letters on it. From what I remember, I glanced away for like a second. And when I looked back, it seemed like a magnet had just fallen from the sky onto the board. Okay. The letter H. I don't remember the exact conversation, but essentially Alicia manages to convince me and one or two other kids that a ghost had taken the magnet and then dropped it back onto the board. 100% I would do this shit. Yep. You fucking love shit like this. Oh, yeah, I did. Looking back, she probably just threw it, but that's less fun. We chose the name Hank since he used the H, and we would mess around with the magnet boards for hours at a time trying to communicate with him. Brother Hank. Baby's first Ouija board, if you will. (laughs) What if it was Hank Green and he figured out in the future (laughs) how to... Time travel, and he's trying to communicate, and he's like, the only people I feel like this is the only thing these I can year use. <laughs> I can use these magnetic letters to communicate. That would be such a Brother Hank move. It would be. I actually um, don't know that. Brother I don't Hank. know that either. Brother Hank, that's not a weird <laughs> kid thing. I don't think you are weird with kids. I, I just met magnets. Yeah, magnets for sure. You oh, give very, magnet vibes. You give me time travel magnet vibes. <laughs> you give big magnetic I didn't mean energy. anything about a Jake. <laughs> A mess. It was like a descendant of his. Oh, wait, but they live in the same time. <laughs> so I'm confused. Time is not linear. Yes. I don't understand. And then, well, Hank basically became my whole religion. Everywhere I went, I shared the tale of Hank, and I slash he slowly got more and more of a following. Half the kids in my grade knew about, about Hank, and we would spend our j- days just trying to learn more about him. There was an area of my school's playground we weren't allowed to go in. Well, surely that's because Hank's body is buried up there underneath a particular bush. This is such a fucking thing you would do, Sherry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, that's very, don't step on the leaves outside of this house because a witch lives there and she will kill you if you make a sound. <laughs> yeah. Which I did tell my sister and my cousin. Yep. We'd constantly sneak up there, leaving out magnets to try to summon him since he could interact with those. And we'd give him sacrifices, a.k.a. Happy Meal toys. <laughs> You're just throwing fucking trash at this bush. We would do something, Hank. (laughs) Come on. We would throw stones into the bush and they would show up over by the cactus or at least very similar looking ones. (laughs) Oh, he moved the stones. (laughs) The paper towel company my school used was named Hill Yard, which clearly is a sign that the hill on the playground is a graveyard. Oh, it's all coming together. It's connected. 
The whole thing was a conspiracy. Our school knew, and they were covering up the truth. 100%. And Hank was trying to tell you mm-hmm. what the truth was. And they were exactly trying to right. silence Hank. I would read this fucking book tomorrow. It's <laughs> so good. This went on for literally the next four years. I'd gather groups up to go up the hill to visit Hank's grave and communicate with him. He wasn't evil, but you had to visit every so often or he'd get angry. <laughs> <laughs> I, fe- I feel that. Yep. It was my job to ensure that he was kept happy. I felt bad for him being murdered by the school and then hidden under a bush and all. (laughs) A few days before the end of my elementary school experience, the bush that Hank was supposedly buried under was chopped (gasps) down to the stump. Because they knew. They knew. The school had killed his ghost. And I, convinced it was all my fault, mourned that damn bush. The legacy of Hank would end along with my elementary education. It was all very dramatic. (laughs) I feel that. Years later, telling my boyfriend about this saga, he says, oh, so you started a cult. <laughs> and you know what? He wasn't wrong. I unwittingly, unwillingly, unwittingly? The fuck are words? I have a concussion, I think. <laughs> Unknowingly? It says unwittingly, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to look that word up. Led a cult of elementary school ghost worshipers. So if I ever need a conversation starter or a killer fun fact for two truths and a lie, hold my beer because I've got a showstopper. Love you guys. That is so fun. a fun story, right? Honestly, so fun. I love elementary school kids just for that reason. Oh, you're weird, dude. (laughs) You're so weird. You're the weirdest you'll ever be. And honestly, don't lose that. (laughs) It's so fun. It's so fun. There's because a photo. It's just like they, they, it's at that point where they don't care yet that people are, you know what I mean? There's, yes. there's no like self consciousness. Yes. It's just like, I'm going to be fucking weird. I literally, and I like it. I designed clothes. I cut them out. I cut out money. I gave the money to my friends and I said, buy the clothes that I just drew. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you weirdo. I, I don't fucking bought some. <laughs> yeah, you did. You bought. I had so many incredible designs. You did. They were so good. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There was a dog. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Memories are flying back. There was a dog mm-hmm. I called Moocher yeah. <laughs> on the way home. And so I'd walk home and I'd be like, there's Moocher still tied outside. That dog is neglected. That dog is sad. That dog is telling me with his eyes he wants to be with me. <laughs> And every day, yes, every day I was like, this dog, his name is Moocher Mm -hmm. and he is abused and he is lonely and he does want to be my dog. Meanwhile, he was well taken care of, I'm pretty (laughs) sure. And I actually think it was a girl and I didn't know anything. I just created this This storyline in my head. Yeah, you did that a lot. Well, what are you going to do? Me thinks I have a dissociative (laughs) issue. Well, maybe. All right, here's the deal. We have poop story, ghost story. Sleepwalking story. Sleepwalking story. Here we go. One leg and a blue eyebrow. Sleepwalking story. Hello, hello. My name is Hannah. She, her pronouns. And I thought I'd send in my own sleepwalking story after hearing Sierra talk about Corey sleepwalking after their wedding. So here it goes. Hannah. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't ever sleep in the same room as me, because if you're going to (laughs) sleepwalk, I'm going to be a mod. Oh, wait for this shit. Are you ready? No. When I was a kid, I would sleepwalk most nights. My parents would find me nowhere near my bed, ready to have full conversations and midnight snacks. Sometimes I'd be found the next morning fast asleep on the kitchen floor or on the couch. Sleepwalking, while not the case for all, was yet another sign of my autism that was yet to be diagnosed until I was 26 years old. Interesting. What a joy to be born with a uterus. Interesting. As a parent now, I can't imagine my kid just talking in the dark while fully asleep. Oh my God, I just remembered that last night while I was up, holding my stomach and being very crampy my daughter was talking in her sleep and she was either saying so her uncle's name is zach but she calls him zacky she was either saying it's zacky it's zacky or she was saying exactly exactly (laughs) and i don't know which one but she was going it's zacky it's zacky and i was like what are you talking about but her eyes were fully closed that's cute it was say with a grimace on your face well i just took a sip of that yeah okay bad enough when we're trying to go to bed and mine just starts sporadically clapping in the dark (laughs) why do they do that but this story is from when i was around 18 years old and while knowing i still sleep talk i thought that sleepwalking was a thing of the past there's a little bit of blood content warning but it's not very detailed so they just put that in there okay you know when you're so tired that you just let yourself sort of collapse onto your bed Mm -hmm. well i remember this one thought during my sleepwalking misadventure this is my bed 
it was not my bed. Oh, no. I dropped face first onto my TV stand, hitting it so hard that it broke. Just fucking <laughs> WWE <laughs> smashing into it, thinking it was Just a bed. Full oh, my God. Fucking, you know when you go to take a step and the step's not there yes but you fully like, commit your muscles to it and then you fucking just <laughs> that's oh, exactly. i can't imagine doing that with my entire body face first yep there was blood everywhere but i luckily don't remember the sensation of the impact my next memory is of standing next to my mom's bed hands in front of the side of my face that i was bleeding from quietly oh God. quietly saying mom over and over again until she woke up and looked at me Keep in mind that I'm just standing there by her bed in the dark like the creepy shit that kids seem to love to do. But instead of being a four-year-old just staring at you in the face, I'm staring at you in the night. That was my own. That was my own. (laughs) It's a fucking scary, scary nightmare. Staring at you in the night. I have blood all over my face and dripping onto my shirt. Sorry, mom. Imagine you wake up and your child's just dripping blood staring at you. I'm good. She jumped at the sight of me. Valid. But thankfully isn't one to start swinging when startled. She's also a pediatric. Imagine that. You're already hurting that your mom just starts beating the shit out Yeah. Of you. She's also a pediatric. Pediatric? Yeah. Nurse in the emergency department of a level one trauma center. So after she got up to take a look at the gash, cleaned it off and put Steri strips on it, I figured that was it. And I was sent off to bed. Only a few minutes later, she came back to my room and said, it's still gaping at me. You need stitches. Let's go. And off to the ER we went. I was pretty out of it, but I do vaguely remember our time in the ER and getting a few stitches because they're still probably like asleep. Yeah, kind of. They were blue, and I had no idea that for some, the blue thread can permanently stain your skin. What? So I learned that with these. Corey has a, a dot on his forehead that's blue that now I wonder if it's from stitches when he was Did younger. Did he have stitches there? I think so, but I can't remember if he told me that. But I've always been like, did you get stabbed by a pen or something? Because it's yeah. like a blue ink stain yeah. on his skin. So Anyways. He's got a face tat. Kind of. It's <laughs> one dot. It's just one dot. So I learned that with these. I still have the blue scar a decade later going through the end of my right eyebrow, and I always will. The twist in this is that there is a twist. Okay. Just three years ago, I had to have my left leg amputated after medical malpractice and years spent trying to save it. For many, when you lose a limb later in life, you often still have your limb in your dreams. I know that I'm rarely an amputee in my dreams, which leads to a new and very specific fear. What if I go to sleepwalk and while dreaming, I have both legs and don't put on my prosthetic. That's I, so scary. So scary. I can't even think about the injury and pain that I'd suddenly wake up to going to take a step and falling on the end of my residual limb. What a lovely thought, right? That's so scary. Yeah. How do you like, wh- how do you prevent that? I don't know. I've been lucky not to sleepwalk at all, at least to my knowledge, since the TV stand pl- face plant that gave me my blue scar, but it's always a risk. Hoping that if I do, a sleep me will at least remember that I only have the one leg. Oh my <laughs> half God. my ass off. Anyways, I hope that y'all enjoyed and thank you for everything you do. You both have saved me more times than I can count, especially following some complications I had with my leg. Oh. I needed it amputated twice, plus a revision surgery and woke up from the first amputation without pain meds, but that's a whole other story. Oh my God. Whoa. Um, abuse, surviving infancy and toddlerhood, and the list goes on. Life has been chaotic and overwhelming as fuck, but the joy, empathy, and solidarity you do, you two bring to the lives of the listeners that tune in goes beyond measure. Oh my God. Thank you. (gasps) P.S. When at a live show for, and that's why we drink, M, Christine, and Eva all signed my prosthetic, and I'd love for y'all to as well someday. Hoping to attend a live show during your next tour with so much love and gratitude, Hannah. Hannah! Absolutely. I would love to. Absolutely. It would be an absolute fucking honor. It sure, sure would. Oh my God, that is insane. Can I write a note and be like, don't sleepwalk without <laughs> without this? Yeah. <laughs> don't you dare. Warning. Hopefully it sinks into the um subconscious. I wanted to say yes. submissive. <laughs> <laughs> the it prosthetic sinks into your submissive. <laughs> the prosthetic subconscious. Yes. It just floats don't. over. And it's you like, don't dare. worry. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on for you. I got you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the ghost story, and then we'll end with the shit story. You ready? Okay. Uh-huh. It's called Horror Slash Ghost Story Submission. That time a ghost tried to kill my parents. What the fuck? Parentheses. Don't worry. They deserved it. They deserved it. It's giving Gypsy Rose. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, hold on. 
Hello, friends. My name is Coraline, and I'd like to share Coraline? the Coraline. Coraline. Okay. And I'd like to share the story of the time a ghost tried to kill my parents, but they totally had it coming. This one is kind of spooky, so I'm just warning you now. Have you everybody. watched the movie Coraline? Yes, I love it. Well, now I'm wondering if this is just retelling the story. No. Okay. No, the story has mentions of child abuse, vague, and okay. the story itself is also a little vague for privacy's sake, but the story is t- too good not to tell. When I was a kid, we moved back into this old house with a fo- big forest as a backyard, and my room was separate from the rest of it. The first time I went into my new room, I found an old photo of a little boy's sports team in the middle of the floor, but the bleach blonde little boy in the front had the eyes scratched out of it in the photo. Ew! I know. It gave me major bad vibes, so I put it back where I found it and went back to my parents. Things were normal after we moved for a little bit, but after a while, the weirdness started to add up. One of the rooms had this weird rust-colored goo that slowly trickled down the walls. No matter what we did, it always came back. If you walked past the living room at night, you couldn't shake the feeling that you were being watched. The mirror in the bathroom lagged sometimes. Lagged? likely a trick of the light but it felt like your reflection was always a second or two behind your movement. How does a light do that? I don't know. I don't know how a light would cause that. <laughs> Scary. I'm upset I'm thinking about lagging mirrors. I don't like it at all. My room was always freezing cold and had numerous electricity issues. The most frustrating being that my TV would turn on at 5 a.m. every morning to a channel I had never set it to and that the mute function never seemed to work because even when the TV was muted, I could still hear voices. But if I turned the volume back up, the voices I just heard and those coming from the TV didn't fully match up. Are we scared? Are we scared yet? I hate this. It's going to get worse. Around this time, my parents started getting really bad. They were never kind people, but the abuse started to become obvious even to me. I had always excused their behavior and taken the blame for it. I thought that if I tried harder, I could stop it, but it just kept escalating. My parents were a children's lit author's wet dream. The Dursleys, the Wormwoods, the ants from James and the Giant Peach all took notes from my parents. One night, after a particularly hard and cruel day, I woke up around midnight and felt really weird. I didn't want to pull my covers down from my face, but I knew I had to. And right there in the middle of the room, exactly where the photo had been, was the little bleach blonde boy with his eyes scratched out. And he was angry, but not at me. We made silent eye contact. Well, explain that to me <laughs> because I'm confused. Where his eyes? Oh, maybe the eyes were still there. They were just scratched out in the photo. Okay, anyways. We made silent eye contact for a while and then he dove through the floor and then things started to change for my parents. Here's some examples. A tree she said, cannonball. <laughs> I got you. A tree collapsed in the yard and destroyed a very expensive purchase that they had just made and then the insurance wouldn't cover it. Two of our very docile pets bit my parents and started to become very aggressive towards them, but remained kind to everyone else, especially me. Several very expensive purchases they made for themselves completely stopped working shortly after purchase for no reason at all. As one of my parents was walking down the hall, a dangerous item being kept in a separate room suddenly lodged itself in the wall right where my parents had been walking. What the hell? The animals in the forest that we had never seen before suddenly began stalking my parents whenever they left the house. Anytime one of them went to work or to take me to school, an animal was there just watching them. (laughs) One parent had a very bad accident at work that could have easily been fatal, but wasn't. And the other had a mental breakdown that was a whole thing, but ultimately resulted in them losing custody of me forever. All while we lived in this house. Oh my gosh. Shortly after this last incident, we left the house and it was torn down and reclaimed by the woods within months. Weirdly. Reclaimed reclaimed by the the woods? woods. Weirdly quickly, in fact. That's spooky. We moved to a new town and I met the boy that would one day become my husband and the father of my children. And the person who got me out of that abusive situation and helped me find the strength to heal, recover, stop blaming myself for other people's cruelty find my own light and magic again, and eventually would give me the strength needed to go 100% no contact with my bio family forever. I don't know what happened to that little boy after that house came down, but I visit the house all the time in my dreams. Mm. And I'm eternally grateful for that little ghost doing everything he could to protect me and changing my life forever. I credit him with my happily ever after, and I could thank him every minute of every day 
for the rest of eternity and still not come close to how grateful I am. That gave me chills. I know. Love the show and I hope you loved my story. I hope you have a wonderful day that turns into a wonderful week and blooms into a wonderful year and grows into a wonderful life. Love, Coraline. Oh, that that's was so beautiful. beautiful. That was a beautiful ending. I'm not going to lie. A lot of times when I'm reading these for the stories, I, I just skip over the endings. Oh, knowing yeah. I'm going to read them, obviously, on the podcast yeah, and yeah, just because yeah. I'm getting the meat of what, right. what I want on here. And then like, you get those always surprise me. They make me feel so good. All right. Last story, everybody. Here we go. Scandal story? Question mark. Fabled poop story. Fabled poop? Fabled poop story. Got it. Here we go. With you. Hello, ladies. You can call me Mud. (laughs) Mud. I'd love to. And my pronouns are they, them. This story is about the time I essentially gave myself dysentery a couple years back. I think that I might have also accidentally did this, but it's okay. That's so weird. What's dysentery? Like when you have constant, you shit yourself until you die, basically. You have diarrhea. It's like the shit that took people out in the. Putting the dye in diarrhea. Yeah. All right. All right. (laughs) All right. I see it. So I'll set the scene for you. Picture it. I'm working at a mediocre corporate wing restaurant. Bonus points if you can guess which one. B dubs. BW threes. Corporate wing restaurant? Yeah. Uh, Quaker Steak and Lube. Nice. I feel it's got to be one of those. It has to be. <laughs> and a little detail about me is that I'm hot and every hot person has tummy Hooters. troubles. Hooters is a good one, too. I'm hot and every hot person has tummy troubles. And on the weekends, I did double shifts. And on these double shifts, I would not poop for the entire weekend. But this particular week, it was now a Tuesday and I still had not dutied. And that is a t- <laughs> Sorry. This one's written really fun. Just so you know. Mm-hmm. Um. I still had not dutied, and that is a total of five, I think, days without one turd passed. At this point, my tummy was hurty, and it was keeping me (laughs) up at night. So at around 4 a.m. on this Tuesday, I'd woken up in a cold sweat, semi-naked and afraid because my gut was in so much pain. This is literally my I know. This is how we started this episode, and now we're ending it this way, too. (laughs) And I didn't remember this. That's so funny, because this was one of the first ones I found. Um. So I stumbled my ass into my tiny apartment bathroom and I reached my little fingies into the cabinet under my sink to grab my Miralax that I kept for dire situations. And this was one. Another thing about me, when I wake up from a sleep, I will do things with my eyes closed and only open them when I absolutely have to. Because in my mind, if I don't open my eyes all the way, I'm not really awake. Mm-hmm. The way I did that for an hour trying to go back and forth to the mm-hmm. bathroom before I was finally like, Sierra, you're, w- you're awake, bitch. Yeah. Like, you're not yeah. going to sleep until fooling? this shit comes. And that's going to wake you Open up. Open your eyes, Yoda. You're not, a, you're not sleeping. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, so I pour out the powder into a cup. Don't think much of it and add in not enough water. Give it a little fingy stir and down the sludge I have created. I'm awakened at the ass crack of dawn, 8 a.m., <laughs> LOL, with a toot. But as soon as I unleash it, I diarrhea it all over my cute brand new undies. <laughs> oh, no. I got up and I hobble walk to the bathroom all while holding my poopy butt. <laughs> And unfortunately, my fiance was already awake and witnessed everything. From this point on, for a whole week, every butt song was followed with liquid shit. And I, at the time, only had to work the next day. And I couldn't even call out because what would I even tell my manager? Hey, boss, I accidentally overdosed on laxatives. And now I shit my pants at least 20 times a day. (laughs) So I get up for work, head there, and feel really shitty. Literally. And everything was fine. But then, you guessed it. While spinning chicken wings in the sticky gross sauce, I let out a toot. Don't ask me why I kept chancing it. I couldn't tell you. And I pooped my pants. But the story doesn't end there. Oh, no. That would be too kind. I run to the bathroom and I erupt into the poor porcelain. And in that moment, I realized I was not alone because some girl screamed and said, Ew, who does that in a public (laughs) restroom? (laughs) Me, bitch. (laughs) Fucking we do. Is me. (laughs) Hi, I'm the, I'm the shitter, shitter, it's me. <laughs> says, which is so rude. And I did cry about it later that night in my car after my shift. <laughs> I feel like it's not Hooters because they wear really short shorts. That's so true. And there's definitely no way you, you shitted in those shorts. Unless they stayed. were back at house. They said they were. Oh, that's true. They're spinning the wings. Yeah. The consequences of my own actions lasted for another two weeks after as well, <laughs> which is awful, but. Anyways, I love you ladies, and I hope laughing at my misfortune brightens your day a little bit. 
Thanks, Mud. <laughs> Thanks, Mud. <laughs> that gives your name a whole new meaning. Oh, yeah, it does. I really Is love that it. why you want us to call you that? I think probably. My pronouns are dirt and water. <laughs> <laughs> my pronouns are poopy butt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I know. And me too. So anyways, <laughs> I hope you all have really solid, healthy, fiber-induced shits this week. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Get your asses together people <laughs> and what we've learned today is hot people have tummy issues hey and that's i couldn't be hotter or have more tummy issues apparently that's what i know um anyway thanks so if you want more stories guys go to patreon.com slash ladies and tangents mm-hmm. if you want to come see us uh, uh two of our last available shows go to our website ladies and uh also <gasps> speaking of our website you uh might be wanting to go there on april 12th which is a couple days from now. So you can see maybe something that you've been missing. Maybe like, something you could put on your body. Maybe like melch. <laughs> maybe a little melch bit of melch. Melch and dice. <laughs> <laughs> not, so it does sound good to do the whole word. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> we love you so much. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye. Bye.